thank you, you, for joining me today. I've got a fantastic video. Today we're going to talk about presidential polling and whether or not you should believe what we hear about the polls. Now, I have seen in the media all kinds of talk about all the polls about this election. However, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I am going to explain it to you in a very, very simple way. Now, I understand a lot about uh, polling, statistics, forecasting. It's something that I studied. I studied it in graduate school. And one of the problems is, is often people think that everybody knows what they know. And so I'm not going to use any jargon today. I'm just going to try to break it down as simply as possible so that I can explain and show you how all of these polls are nonsense. Okay, now, one thing that you have to keep in mind about polls is that they cost money. And to be published, they have to be paid for. And you need to think about who is paying for these polls and would they pay for a poll that doesn't have the result that they want? Maybe, <laughs> but probably not. You know, a lot of these media companies, they do have a bias and they want to buy a poll that has the results that they are looking for. Now, the example that I'm going to use today is a brand new poll that came out. This is from New York Times Siena College. And this was just done October 23rd to 26th. So this was just published uh, today. And according to Nate Silver on 538, this is the A plus rated poll. This is the gold standard of polls. Of all the polls that there are out there, this is what he says is the best poll. And this one in particular deals with Nevada. And so we're going to go over some of the statistics, uh, some of the numbers from this poll, and I'm going to show you why you shouldn't believe it at all. So let's go over just some of the basics, some of the basic numbers about this poll. You know, often if you only ask a certain number of people something, you're only going to get those answers. And in this case, they polled, 60% of those polled were white. Now, in the state of Nevada, a little bit, about two-thirds are white. So they polled less white people than there are people in the state. Well, is there a reason for this? Because traditionally, uh, whites actually voted a higher rate than non-whites. And so, you know, as people would say in uh, Among Us, the, the video game, that's a little sus, okay? Um, why would they only poll 60% whites when in the general population there's 67% whites? That's a little, little fishy. And if we go down further, we look at uh, who they polled. Uh, they polled 33% were Democrats, but in actuality, 37.6% of those registered, uh, according to last month's data, were Democrats. So a little bit fewer Democrats than what's represented in the voter registration numbers. Republicans, uh, they polled 29%, and in actuality, 31.7% uh, of those people that are registered are Republicans. And for the last category of independent, I just threw everybody that wasn't Democrat or independent into the same category just to make it easy. But they polled 34% were not Democrat or Republican. But according to voter registration numbers, uh, only 30.6% of people in Nevada are registered as neither Republican nor Democrat. So that's interesting. They oversampled one group. They undersampled the other two groups. But when we look historically, Republicans that are registered to vote vote at a higher rate than Democrats historically across the board. And so why they didn't do this in this calculation really doesn't make any sense. And there's no explanation as to these sample sizes. Now, this is where it gets really tricky 
because we go to the New York Times today and we look at the article that explains this poll. And it's really nuts because what they have found is they're saying that Biden is at 49 and Trump is at 43. So Biden has a six point lead in their poll. And if we look down here, we look at race and they have it broken down by white or Hispanic. White, uh, Biden has 41%, Trump 52%, Hispanic 59%, Trump 30%. Well, this is where it gets really interesting because the A plus rated New York Times poll doesn't understand the difference between race and ethnicity. Hispanic is not a race. In fact, if you go to the data for this poll, you can look and you can see in the entire data set, the word Hispanic is not there. In the entire data set, it's broken down by white and non-white. And I don't know if you know this or not, but most Hispanic people, according to the government, are white. And so why the New York Times would break it down in this way makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The writers of this article clearly either don't understand the difference between race and ethnicity, or I don't know, because you can go to the data set, the word Hispanic isn't even there. It's not there at all. And to me, that's incredible. But I just go back to the point of who paid for the poll. The New York Times paid for this poll. They got the results that they wanted. Now, you look into the numbers, it makes no sense whatsoever, none. It makes no sense. In fact, if I were a high school statistics teacher, I don't know, maybe I would give this a D if a student handed it in because I'm being generous. But a college statistics uh, professor would fail anyone that turned in this poll. That's how unbelievable it is. So what do you think? Do you think that this New York Times Siena College poll is the A plus gold standard of polling? <laughs> because I don't. I don't at all. If you learn something about the polls, if you feel a little bit better about ignoring them, do me a favor, hit that like button and share this video. Share this video with someone that's concerned about these polls, because I hope that I've done a good job of explaining why they're complete nonsense. Have an awesome day. Peace. Thank you.